without having to start all over again, InfoSparks, Market Statistics, we're going to very simply go under the Links tab to access all of our third-party member benefits again, and this time we're going to scroll down to where it says InfoSparks Market Statistics. When we click here, little window is going to open up. It's going to show us InfoSparks. It's going to show us information going back from 2019 back to 2014. We're going to see the entire MLS data of the median sales price at 538 right now. All the properties, every city, everything in the MLS for over 200,000 plus listings. For every county, every MLS system that associates itself with CRMLS. Now, does that freak everybody out that median sales price is 538 overall? No, that's about right, right? right? You would right. think, right? right? What we need to now do is start to get specific for us, right? Anthony, you said that's for because CRMLS has a a, a wide footprint throughout all of California, right? We've got San Diego data, we've got Orange County data, we got LA County, we got San Bernardino, we got Ventura, we got Palm Desert, we got Mid California and Northern California data as well, right? So from south to north, we've got a bunch of information. Not all of it just yet, but a lot of it, right? Now we need to narrow it down to our specific needs. Starting with top left corner where it says entire MLS. Here we're looking at the entire MLS, but maybe now we need to narrow it down by either city, area, county, whatever. We just simply click in this, this little down arrow right here, and now we can start narrowing down some of our matrix by, say, county, city, zip code, school district, MLS area, agents information, office information, my areas we'll talk on, and firms. I don't know what the difference between a firm and an office is, but it's there. What I see you as an agent using this mostly for are either zip code, city, county, or MLS area, or specifically my areas. We'll touch on that today. But say, at this point, we want to say, you said you work in Lakewood, sir? Here we type in Lakewood. When I type in Lakewood, I see here, the area of Lakewood, or is, oh, it's together? There we go. Now we've got all these things related to Lakewood, but now I want to choose the city of Lakewood. When I choose the city of Lakewood, I now all of a sudden see here, come on, let's do it again. There we go. I see my chart now all of a sudden changes and says all property types attached, right? All bedrooms. The median sales price for all properties here in Lakewood are 569 median sales price. Now, maybe my marketing, I like to market to detached structures, right? Or, or uh, yeah, I want to market to detached structures. What I'm now going to do is come over here to where it says detached because that's usually single family. I can click on this, and now I see my median sales price changes just a little bit to 575, right? If I unselect that and go with attached, median sales price is 350. By the way, we look over here to that far right, we see 350 and it's gone down 27, almost 28% compared to a year before. So prices in Lakewood have dropped significantly compared to a year. We'll see on this chart, this line graph, the ups and downs of the market throughout the entire year. Now, what's super cool about this line graph, if I hover over top of the line graph, I'll see the previous month information. So I can now see each individual median sales price through every month. So if I come all the way back here to April or March, because we're comparing March to March, it was at 485 from a year ago. A big drop, 27%, right? Go back to the next year, and we can see the actual price back in 2007 was 490, right? And, of course, the year after that, 360. So we're almost back to where we were, what was that, two years ago, three years ago. How are you getting the 350? Oh, the 350 yeah, is... For the for the attached. So what I did was I selected attached, and it shows me here 
that you know, usually attached would be like your condos, condos. or your townhomes. Yeah. It's having condos. Or no, like, townhouses. Now, if I went back to the detached, right? Hopefully, we'll see these numbers a little bit differently. We were at 575, yeah. right? It's only down for three percent compared to a year ago. Mm -hmm. And if you look here, what's some? This is actually quite amazing for you guys because I don't see this too often. You virtually have no change in your market. What does that get a percentage sign? The percentage change. You should. Um, are you just not seeing it? Looking at different areas. Oh, you're just looking at different areas. So there's still something wrong. Yeah, I should tell you the percentage difference. That's interesting. We'll have to contact Sarah Moss about that. That should at least give you a percentage change because you're going back four years or five years practically. Okay. Now, um, real quickly, maybe I market in different neighborhoods or different cities. Anybody here market different cities? You ever want to compare different cities sometimes? Yeah. You can do that too. Here next to Lakewood, you'll see the next the next to the Lakewood tab, there's a choice here that says add an area. I can click on this choice, and now I can click in here and say uh, Cerritos. Now I'm going to select Cerritos, and now I've got a side-by-side -side comparison. So I see here that in Lakewood... And I can go back to detached again. Sorry. That Lakewood's detached properties is at 575, whereas Cerritos's properties, <laughs> bless you, are at 759. Now, Lakewood, we have a drop in our median sales price from a year ago by 3%, but Cerritos has gone up from a year ago by 2.6. So now all of a sudden we can compare, right? Now, we can have at least four extra tabs or a total of four tabs here in our list. So now we can have a side-by-side -side comparison of different cities or different areas or areas within a city. Can you do zip codes? I can do zip codes. Could, could you click attach for me? Sure. Look at Cerritos. What is that, that tab? <laughs> so the Cerritos is at $73,000. Hmm. Wow. A drop by 82%. <laughs> so maybe I might think about buying a condo in Cerritos right now because it's pretty darn affordable. Wow. Right? Especially because now what we're well now what's funny is out of the entire MLS, attached properties have gone up by six percent, but that's the entire MLS. But now what we could do, you said you wanted to try a zip code, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in this box that says entire MLS. Now tell me the zip code. 90305. 90305. Now we've got the 90305 in green. So they've actually gone up 1.5% to 590. So, and uh, whoops, sorry. Let's go back to that attached because that was quite not quite funny, but here we go. So 90305 dropped by 17%, but they're still at 480. Lakewood's still at 350. This worries me about Cerritos. Wrong with that right now. Yeah. All right, so Cerritos is only at $73,000, and it's dropped 82%. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you know, It's either people are just trying to get out of Cerritos, or... And they're taking so, anything at that why point. Don't, why don't you switch to detached? Well, we can look at detached. Maybe, maybe the yeah, detached market. Much more sense. You see? And let's there actually. Now. now Cerritos, they actually went up in their detached market, seven fifty nine oh, up by two point six. The only people that have dropped here is in Lakewood. Other than that, nine oh three oh five is going up. 4%, Cerritos is up by 2.6% in the Canadian sales price. Ideally, what we can do is we can put in all those different areas, right? We can even put in the different areas within Cerritos or different areas within Lakewood or what have you. So now you can say you have the city and then the top two or three areas that you're marketing in 
to show those comparisons of if you were up here, your prices have gone up here and there, right? By the way, we haven't even touched any of these other statistics yet. So right now we're looking at just the median sales price. So now let's look at maybe why that attached market in Cerritos might be dropping, right? As an example. Yes, sir. So how do you explain that? Let's say, you know, you're showing me on your client. Mm -hmm. I ask you, well, how come the prices dropped 3% in Lakewood and in Inglewood it went up 4%? Why is that? Well, let's go and take a look. So... A lot of times things are all about like the supply and demand, right? Maybe it's in an area that's appreciating. People are moving out because at one point in time, maybe looking at this information, especially that it was up, that if it was more affordable than what it was today, right? So if we were looking at that attached market, right? We're seeing that in Lakewood, it's at 350. And then compared to a year ago, Cerritos was at 412. So that was, that'd be kind of scary. But let's take a look at how many listings have come on the market, right? So maybe those areas are all of a sudden listing. So we see here in March, Lakewood had six properties come up for sale, up six or up 500%, meaning that not a lot of people listed last year, obviously. Cerritos, you had a drop in inventory coming on the market this time last year. So two, so they had four properties come on this time last year in March. Five, up 150%, right, kind of thing. So now we can also now look at maybe their active inventory. So Cerritos has got 10 properties currently active on the market. You got Lakewood with nine, you got 903, five with only one property currently active on the market we can look at their pending sales how many people have actually successfully got in into escrow Those are attached properties, right? these are what attached. these are all attached properties right and of course closed sales so right off the bat I think the reason why it's dropped is that not many people are actually listing and that could have a number of factors, maybe because higher interest rates, people aren't willing to get out of an interest rate that they're, they were locked into, right? I'm sure at least with, what was it, two or three years ago, if we'd all of a sudden go into Remind, market that neighborhood, or look at that neighborhood, and we see, hey, everybody's under 4% in their mortgages. Now we're asking them to pay almost 5% in the mortgage. What's their willingness to list? Right? So in these cases, in these particular areas, you're not getting a lot of new listings coming on the market. You definitely don't have a lot of active inventory on the market, which probably also, or which does determine, especially when it comes to closed sales. If you only had one closed sale last month, and that closed sale was the only one to look at, and that was for $73,000. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. That's where it's going to get you, right? Because mm -hmm. your fair median at that point, you only have one. So what's the median? The one that you're looking at. So that could be the case of why Serena's is attached is at 73000 because somebody sold their condo for that or their attached property. If we look at that detached, we might see something a little different. You're gonna have a lot more. Yeah. Cerritos has at least got 19 closed sales in the month of March, which is now explaining why we're looking at the median of 759, right? So based on the number of closed. Now what's crazy is look at how many properties closed in Lakewood. 69. What time frame was that? Just in the month of March. Just in the month of March. Yeah. Right? 69 properties. Now let's see here. New listings coming on the market in, in Lakewood was 75. So a lot of people are listing. You have 85 listings actually currently active in the MLS. So they're, Lakewood's moving and shaking right now. It's moving and shaking. And of course, we're trying to look at the 
numbers are 56 properties actually got into escrow. And then, of course, the 69 properties closed. So there's 69. This is just in the month of March compared to the month of March last year. But again, if I hover over top of the, the, this line, I'll see each and every individual number. Right? But typically, I'm seeing a month of this year and the percentage change compared to that same month of last year. Right? So here we can look at those individual choices, right? Now, I'm gonna get rid of some of these here. So we're gonna say, stay with Lakewood, just because that seems to be a little fun. Now here we're looking at detached properties, but out of those detached, I wanna see number of bedrooms. Oh, by the way, you have more information here. If we click on the little right arrow, we can actually look at number of bathrooms, number of bedrooms, price range, square footage, things like that. Now, say, and I'm gonna come back here to the sales price, looking at the median. I wanna see the actual individual sale prices or median sale prices for my bedroom breakdown. I wanna see if there are any one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and four bedrooms or more, and how those prices are affected, right? to get me that 575. Now, instead of just clicking on each and every individual one here, you'll notice here that I've got a little two-way arrow just to the right of that selection. If I click on this two-way arrow, I now automatically pick all of these, and now I get to see their individual numbers. So I can see that in Lakewood, there is a one-bedroom or fewer that their median sales price is 540. Two bedrooms are, are two bedroom properties are 610. Three bedroom properties are 759, and there are no properties that are four bedrooms or more that are residential here in Lakewood that were up for sale. So we get to see all that. And again, just simply click on that number or that that uh, selection and click on this two-way arrow to get the individual number breakdowns. We can even do this for the active listings. So here right now we see that there are 30 properties in the month of March that are current, that were currently active. We get that are one bedroom or fewer, two bedrooms um, at 45, three bedrooms that are 10. And of course there are currently no four or more bedrooms in Lakewood currently active. Anybody like that so far? Right. Great. Great stuff, right? Yay. Now. I feel like an analyst. <laughs> you're going to be an analyst, right? <laughs> now, what do we do with all this analytical information? Now, by the way, maybe some of these hills and valleys that you see in your market kind of freak you out, right? Because a lot of people really freak out when you see those sharp peaks and those sharp valleys throughout the year. We can smooth this out a little bit by going from our these choices down here, underneath or just above the chart, and that is the monthly choice. So right now we're looking at a monthly change each and every month. But re really, maybe I wanna smooth this out and say, show me three month or six month or 12 month changes. So when I click on say the rolling 12 months, we're actually gonna, now gonna see a smooth out of those lines. So now, instead of seeing the sharp peaks and valleys that are changing each and every month, we now say March, 12 months ago, how that changed, February, 12 months ago, January, 12 months ago. So now what we do is take out all of those sharp peaks and valleys and show either a steady incline, steady increase, or in this case, looks like a steady straight line. I don't know how you got the bathrooms on the right hand side. Oh, that's because, oops, one of the choices over here, bathrooms. Sorry, I didn't mean to mark bathrooms. I meant to mark bedrooms. So right now what I did was I selected the choice of active properties, broken down how many active properties for one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four more or total. And this is, and I selected this two-way arrow to show me all all four choices, okay? 
I could even jump over here to the median sales price, still with the number of bedrooms, and we still have that that breakdown. And that percentage change to the right of the price is just comparing it to last year. Comparing it to last year, so bet so two bedrooms compared to last year increased by four point five percent at five thirty five. Um, three bedrooms increased by five point six, jumping up to five eighty nine. And I think that's also looking at, do I have detached here still? Yeah, detached. So we get to see all of that too. So here we can smooth out the lines by changing the, the rolling months. Maybe show a couple of valleys here and there going back three. Now, if I don't want to go back five years, I can click on the down arrow here and I can say, Show me a three-year change, show me a one-year change, or just max it out and go back to, to 20, uh, 2008, so 10 years. So if you notice here, like the median sales price, and maybe we get rid of the bedrooms here, we show a 10-year change. So back in 2008, median prices were just at 450, then by 12, when we had that or we were just at the bottom of our market and then the steady increase to where we're at today, which is over 500. So now anybody remember the recession? Uh -huh. Right? Yes, of course. But yet, who else remembers the recession? Our customers, our clients, right? Some of them feel that, I don't know if I actually recovered because I did buy my home back in 2007, 2008. At least chances are you probably have recovered because we've already superseded our past um, height, right? And again, another intelligent conversation to have, right? So now we can say, well, what's causing, you know, we are past the peak, we're all past this. Does this mean that we're going to go and have another bubble pop? Probably not, because if we look at the inventory and the closed sales and the number of active listings and this, that, and the other, it might tell us a different story, right? So if we looked at uh, active properties going back 10 years, you had way more active properties than you do today. You had more than 400 active properties in the MLS 10 years ago versus today where you barely have 100. But you're way over what that peak was at 450. So in this case, I think it's your inventory that's helping because not as many people have choices as they did 10 years ago, right? Now, uh, besides the max, maybe I don't like to look at line graphs. I can now switch it to a bar graph. It's nice about the bar graph. It breaks it down, tells me, goes back three years and tells me each individual for this particular stat, its number and its change from the year prior. So what's nice about something like this is I can say that we have 85 properties, we're still up from two years ago from 72. Though we've dropped since 2018. All right. Now, how do we get this information out? Well, we can share. Right, because one of the things we do is door knock and we post up flyers. Anybody hear video marketing campaigns? Like you could sit down in front of the camera every once in a while and talk. No one in this room. One yes, no, excellent. Want to, start. want to start, right? But you gotta have something to talk about, rather than just saying, "Hey, I've got this property, I've got this open house, da da da." Right? This is where the share button comes in. What I can now do is share several ways. I can email out a PDF document through either social media, email, or create a PDF. So here maybe I choose PDF, I say share, and now I view the PDF document. And what's super cool about this is that the document automatically becomes branded with your information pulled from the MLS. So make sure that in the MLS under your roster, you have correct information. Make sure that your phone number, your email address, your, e uh, your email address, your phone number, your fax number, and of course your DRA license number is correct. 
It will have your company logo there. It will have, hopefully, even your photo. If you don't have a photo uploaded to your roster, go under Add Edit, go under Roster, and hit uh, type in your user ID for the MLS, and then say Manage Photos. Upload a photo of yourself. Now, there'll be like some of the board of directors that we all probably know that still use their photos from 40, 50, 60 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure it's an updated photo. This is how people see you today. But at least now, with this PDF file, I can print it. I can save it and maybe attach it to my flyer, front and back, at an open house. Right? Maybe I have a PDF editor where I'll add extra things on here, like contact me today for more information. So I give them a call to action. I give them maybe... Or I use that PDF editor, and I'll go back in, and I'll make side-by-side -side graphs. So maybe I don't want, or I want to show just active properties, but now I want to show the median sales price of the detached properties in the area. And again, maybe if I still break it down by the bedrooms. Now I put these things together, and I say, hey, if you have a three-bedroom home or a two-bedroom home or whatever, I'd love to come and see you today or meet with you to give you a, a proper home evaluation. Get it on their door. It's got all your branding on it, right? Now, the other way to share this besides print and, of course, email, embed. How many of you have websites? Three, four, excellent, four people out of seven. That's okay. If you have a property website, now wait a minute. In your property website, you want people to actually access real information at all times, right? Now you'll notice at the very top it says static. Static means these are the numbers that you see right now, but you want that to change on your website because you don't want to have to go back into your website, take out the old charts and upload the new charts, right? Choose live. Now, when what we're doing is we're now going to ha have an embedded link with live time information for this statistic that we can now input into our web. So maybe we have a web page dedicated to Lakewood. So we highlight some of the properties in Lakewood that are currently active, but right there on the same page, here are the current total active market in Lakewood. Here's the total median sales price, or here's the active median sales price for Lakewood. They go into it today, they see the March numbers. They go into it next month, they'll see the April numbers. And you don't have to do anything. So what is it that you are now giving to people? Come on. Live information. So what are you now? An expert. An expert, or actually not even an expert because they haven't talked to you yet, you're an information source. You're an information center. People want to get information, they want to be able to find information. So if you become a source of that information, what are they now going to be more than likely going to do? Six Call years. you. Connect with you. Hey, I saw this particular statistic on your website. Can you elaborate what this means? Let me look at it. What is it that you're looking at? What statistic are you looking at? Oh, okay, this is what this means. So are you interested in listing? Are you interested in buying this and the other? Yes, sir. So what does that look like? So this will look exactly like this chart here with your information on it. So it'll be this bar graph that I have selected for this particular statistic. So what you do is that on your website, maybe whoever your website designer is, you email them these links. Put these links for, for Lakewood. So you have your new, new statistic, you have your active statistic, you have your closed sales statistic. Maybe you even have, um, oh, I don't know, days on market. Because days on market are always huge, right? People want to know how fast they're selling their homes or how long does it take to get into escrow. Maybe even this one, the percentage of original list price being received. Now, you know what that statistic means? When I list a property in the MLS, based on my listing agreement, maybe my price is a million dollars. Now, when we go to close escrow, we close at 800000 
how much of my asking price did I get, or my original asking price did I get? 80%, right? Percentage of last list price being received is, I listed the property in the MLS for a million, but I, by the time I got into escrow, it was listed at 860. We closed escrow at eight. How much of my list price did I get at the time it closed? So what was my list price at the time that it closed, or how, and how much did I get versus my original list price? So we're not taking into account of the original list price any price changes. So you couldn't put that information into Facebook, right? I could put it into Facebook. I could put it on my property website. I could put. And it would, it would, uh, the only problem with doing right. it on Facebook is that as you put in new posts to your feed, that one feed that you posted with the live statistics just gets pushed down on the list. Right. On your personal property website. Hey, I go to what's your name? Salso. Salso. I go to salso.com. He's got property information there. He's got on the Cerritos page, because I, I want to look into buying Cerritos. He's got on the Cerritos page all the statistics. Now, what's nice about the embedded live link is that if I look at his website a month from now, those numbers will automatically change. He doesn't have to do anything extra. Whereas if I make it static, now I've got to take out the old data, because if I go into it in May, and I still see March's numbers. Now you're giving me old information that I don't need and can't use. So yes, you could do this on Facebook, like the social media posts. Do those as statistic, uh, static statistics, because come the next time you post on your social media, you're going to rerun the, the the post or the rerun the the stat line. Right, but but it will start. I mean, it will, it will look right on Facebook. Yeah, it will look like that way. Um, let's see here. If we go to share, and I say do it this time to social media, and I hit share. This is the link. When I put that link on social media, this is what it'll look like. That. Okay. So here I can share it to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Google account, my whatever. I'm doing it right now. Perfect. Cool. Yay, somebody's like actually live time doing statistics. I think that's the first I've ever had in a class. Okay. Yeah. But ideally, what like I said, your your website is where your hub is, where you're centralized. Everything else feeds into it. Your Facebook, your YouTube page, your Twitter account, your LinkedIn account your flyers, your postcards, your business cards, right? All reference your personal website. Your personal website should be informational. So if we're giving them informational and updated informational data, they'll start using us as an information resource, or should. All we gotta do now hopefully is now pick up the phone or answer an email or answer a text. Anybody here not pick up a phone? Exactly. Good. Thank God I didn't see a hand raise. <laughs> right. So here we can do that. Are there any questions on any of this? Looks pretty simple, right? All right. Last thing that we'll go over, InfoSparks. And like I said, do multiple charts if you're doing it on your website. Last thing that we'll go over and touch on is my areas. Now, my areas are mapped out areas that you want to specifically keep track of. So, the areas that you're marketing. This is going to be, again, good for your marketing campaigns because now you can, again, with your target marketing that we just went over with Remi, you can actually get, to pe under get people to understand what's actually happening in their neighborhood. So, yes, this is great for our cities, our zip codes, the MLS areas within that city, things like that. By the way, only because I know Irvine pretty well, you have Irvine, the city, but then you've got areas within Irvine like Turtle Rock, if you've ever heard of that. So the MLS area of Turtle Rock, we can compare those 
how the city and the areas within that, but then now I want specific neighborhoods within Turtle Rock or within Lakewood, right? This is where my areas comes in. So here what I can do is I can click on the my areas tab and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now jump to an area. Now this will now require me to zoom in a little bit. And why can't I zoom in? Control, there we go. So we're gonna jump all the way over here to Lakewood. And now I've got a particular neighborhood I wanna mark it. So now what I'm gonna do is either draw the circle or the polygon around my neighborhood. So here I'm gonna select the polygon and I'm gonna click around my neighborhood. Now I'm gonna come over and hit save. Now I'm gonna name it. Now I'm gonna say save. Now this will analyze it and say, okay, you're, you've done about a half a mile and you've got 975 properties to look at for statistical information. Now I'm gonna hit close. Now to look at the statistical information for my area, or areas, because I can do multiple different areas. I'm gonna come back into InfoSparks. From here now, when we click on the down arrow, I'm now gonna select my areas as a choice, and now this will give me all my saved areas to choose from. So now I'm gonna click on my Lakewood community in that small little section that I picked, and I see my statistical information. So now I can, Put together my marketing materials when I go and door knock. Hey, this is what's been happening in your community. I do a video about it. So now I print out my statistics, I sit down in front of my camera, and now I have information to talk about each and every month. Anybody like that? Mm -hmm. That's great. Totally hard. You guys need another break? Mm -hmm. So this is only residential, not, not, not multifamily. No, unfortunately, just residential. I, I don't even think this has rental yet. I know we've gotten a few requests, or CMLS is getting requests to show and display rental property information. But as it stands right now, no, it does not give, I don't think. Uh, let's, and be, before you quote me on that, I do see single family condo, townhome, manufactured. Um, I do not see. Did yeah. Square what was that? Did uh, you try to go to the largest square footage? Yeah, but it won't. If the property is a commercial or income property or rental property, I'm only going to see residential for sale information. So yeah, they didn't. They don't have that just yet. Now, um. I will go over one extra thing here because I know, know we do have a broker in the room. So broker, there's a button here that's called market, market View. The Market View button is going to be really super cool because now we can see the top agents in a particular given area. So we got Lakewood, or we're going to type in here Lakewood. And now what I'm going to say is show me the top agent. So here, rank it by agents to highlight. So I'll now see the top 100 agents that have the list side, the buy side, and of course their total number of sales or total number of units that they've sold plus their sales volume. So that's in Lakewood. This is in Lakewood. So if I go under market view, and now I just type in Lakewood, I can see that this gentleman, Gustavo Lua, has a total of three units so far for the previous month. He has totaled $1,715,000. Now what I can do is say, instead of just the previous month, I can say um, rolling 12 months, and now I can see what he's like for the year, or who the top agent is for the year 
And now we can see that in the past year, the top agent in Lakewood has been Allison Van Wig with 31 units sold, 27 on the list side, four on the buy side, and her total volume was over $19 million. So this is a great tool to see who your competition is. Because you can also do this under the with the my areas choice. So who's my competition in the area that I or in my neighborhood that I'm marketing? Okay. So agents, you guys can now look at your competition. And of course, this is great for your business plan. What's my goal? I want to be number one agent in Lakewood. So that means I now got to sell 31 properties in Lakewood to be number one. So I need to at least sell 32 or 33. Yeah. Anybody hear that ambitious? <laughs> I should see every hand raised. <laughs> right? You guys want to be the number one agent. It's all it's called healthy competition. Because look at number three. He's only done eight. Or this person only did eight. And that's Don in this city. That's a huge gap. It is. Anybody like that? Mm -hmm. Motivation. This is to motivate you. Let's go out there and get those properties. Because, hey, business just doesn't come to us. We have to go out and get it. Okay. Any other questions on info sparks? No? All right. Why don't we take another five-minute break, let you guys decompress a little bit more. Stand up, check out the cobwebs, and then we'll start back up at 1.03. And we'll go over 12 oh three. Sorry. Over. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you guys an hour break. Um, and then we'll jump right into RPR. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video. And we'll do that.